It's become sort of a running joke about street guys, whatever that means, uh, incriminating themselves on social media, but it's oh so real. Just ask the former lean supplier of Chris Brown, Little Wayne, and others, Cuban Harry. You'll probably be shocked by the federal prison term he received uh, back in 2017, but I'll wait to the end to tell you what that was. According to court records, uh, Department of Homeland Security, I don't know why that was them doing it, first opened an investigation into Garcia for trafficking both Purple Drink and uh, the Reefers uh, back in the summer of 2015. Quote, over the course of the investigation, law enforcement monitored Garcia's use of his Instagram page to traffic illegal controlled substances, a law enforcement affidavit letter stated. Records provided by Instagram pursuant to the search warrant revealed direct messages sent and received by Garcia in which Garcia negotiated with customers for the sale of promethazine with codeine, MJ, and other controlled substances and agreed to provide the requested narcotics. Oh yeah, you didn't know? Instagram is letting the Fed see what's going down in your DM. <coughs> now, after using this info for about a year or so to, to track uh, Cuban Harry, Harrison Garcia, uh, they started amping up the pressure on them. In August and September of 2016, Homeland Security agents monitored Garcia selling promethazine and uh, referred to a confidential informant twice. One time he made a $1,900 sale, once was for $2,600. Boom! October 2016, the feds hit Cuban Harry. They hit his house in Miami and it was pretty much a wrap from there. They found a Glock and an FNN semi-auto. Two pounds of the high-grade Zazas and a bottle of Prometh with codeine with the street value of over $1,000. That stuff's worth even more now, especially if it was the infamous uh, no longer available activist, which I think supposedly if you have an old bottle of it, it's six bands now. Now, Cuban Harry's helpfulness to the federal government didn't uh, stop at just conveniently providing evidence of what he was doing on his Instagram and his DMs. When they raided him, he uh, took him to his stash house in another part of Miami where they found uh, an AK-47 assault rifle, an Uzi, and 3,000 Zanny pills. Now, when he started going to court, Cuban Harry's defense team put up kind of uh, standard defense when you don't have when you're clutching at straws in a, in a big drug conspiracy case uh, they said he was a drug addict who merely sold to support his own habit and that his drug dealing social media posts were all studio gangster persona quote i had an image to portray to boost up my followers cuban harry said during his sentencing i guess it's just the music industry i was never a drug trafficker but Garcia was doing more than just guzzling the lean himself. According to federal prosecutors, Cuban Harry was responsible for pumping the Miami music scene, which had become a key spot for hip hop tastemakers, full of illegal promethazine and codeine syrup. After four days of testimony at his trial, jurors heard that he admitted uh, to selling large amounts of various dopes to uh, Little Wayne, and he even received $15,000 at once from Chris Brown. So, young Beezy was spending a lot of money at once, $15,000 in one sale. And I know you guys have accused me sometimes of implying celebrities, you know, like our informants and stuff, but again, I gotta ask you, like, how do they know the details of a particular sale and the exact dollar amount? Makes you kind of wonder. Perhaps it was in one of the direct messages that they uh, got from their search warrant. Probably. At the time of his arrest, Cuban Harry boasted more than 36,000 IG followers, and the account was a uh, parade of Cuban Harry's lavish lifestyle, soaked in lean, diamonds, tattoos, and guns, and weed smoke, and money, and hanging out with celebrities. 
There were pictures of Garcia flashing diamond mouth grills, spewing mountains of smoke, and flexing a body full of tattoos, including Tony Montana. Paling with superstars like Lil Wayne and Chris Brown, like I said, here's an IG video that he still has up of him and Chris Brown on a PJ, a private jet, and it looks like uh, Cuban Harry, there he is on social media, showing all this expensive jewelry to the celebrity. And it's almost like Chris Brown's his groupie. That's the body language in this video. Now, as for his lengthy sentence, Cuban Harry's real problem in court was a lot more than just selling some lean and weed or Xanax or whatever and having a gun. It was the way that he was obtaining the lean, which if, you know, obviously is very hard to get now. I don't know, 10 years ago, it wasn't that hard to get and it was slowly getting more restrictive. So by this time in 2015, 2016, uh, I mean, I wasn't into it, so I'm, I don't know the exact timeline, but I think at this point it was starting to get fairly hard to get. So where was he getting it from? Uh, in January of 2017, because uh, he had kind of two sets of charges, one in federal court, one in state. In state court, he was charged with masterminding a crew that pulled off dozens of pharmacy smash and grabs and full out burglary, burglaries that had become the only way to obtain the increasingly restricted codeine syrup. And by that time, like I said, it was over a thousand a pint and it's a lot more now. His case was added to the pending trials of three men and a woman already facing prosecution for dozens of pharmacy burglaries from Plantation to Homestead, Florida. Uh, those are two, two small cities in the greater Miami area. Kind of gives you a flavor of what Miami's like. It's a city called Plantation and another one called Homestead. That's enough. The government contended that uh, Cuban Harry quarterbacked that crew of robbers. The police in South Florida linked him to four individuals, Alonso Henson, Brian Pitter, Darish Martin, and Chantel Ponce, who were charged in burglaries of Walsh Green stores. Ponce and Pitter both reportedly took plea deals and worked with the prosecution. The Miami Herald said the crew would operate by donning masks and using crowbars to enter the pharmacies and uh, go after expensive prescription medication, uh, primarily for him, including the lean. I'm not sure if they were just doing it for him or he was a customer who would buy all the lean. Maybe these people were doing their own pharmacy things, but like I said, the Fed said he quarterbacked them like he was directing traffic. From the evidence and testimony put forward by the state at a trial in April of 2017, the government's best source of activities, like I said, on Garcia's activities was Garcia himself. The 27-year-old relentlessly boasted online, referring to himself as, quote, the CEO of Purple Drink, and he even had a diamond-encrusted styrofoam cup as a pendant. Quote, Mr. Garcia was definitely a very important mover. Tony Salisbury, a deputy special agent with Homeland Security, told the Miami New Times. Now again, I don't know why this guy's case was Homeland Security. Maybe, at least Cuban, maybe he was uh, an illegal immigrant. I don't know, that's interesting. Why was it Homeland Security? That'd be something to look into. Or maybe Homeland Security just doesn't, doesn't have much to do, so they stick him on all sorts of federal cases. That's certainly a possibility. Now, Garcia's defense attorney uh, had this to say, quote, Harrison Garcia is just a young, foolish man who got caught up in the rap world, the drugs, and the glamour. This all begins by him stupidly putting stuff on Instagram. Well, it all began with your client committing crimes. But yes, the investigation did all begin with your client outing himself. Kind of hard to see how he would have got caught or at least as fast as he did. Remember, they, they were intercepting his DMs, doing drug deals, and he was showing the, 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 the lean on Instagram and he was showing jewelry and cars that he couldn't account for uh, the proceeds from, and they will have the IRS get on the stand and say, hey, this guy, you know, showed a million dollars worth of uh, 
material items and he filed a $20,000 uh, income tax return or no income tax return. That alone will get you sent to prison. They got a lot of mafia guys like that. At his sentencing hearing before U.S. Judge Patricia Seitz, the wild personality named Cuban Harry from Instagram or Muhammad Ali, as he calls himself, was replaced by a contrite Harrison Garcia. Quote, I want to briefly apologize to my parents and your honor, Garcia said. Hopefully, I learned from this. So just what was his sentence for stealing lean and selling it to Chris Brown and Tunichi and others? 30 years in federal prison. Wow. It's the same sentence Big Meech and Southwest T, for example, got for, as we know, you know, selling tens of thousands of kilos over multi-states over more than a decade. I mean, that's a rough, rough sentence. I mean, I don't care. I mean, how much could he have made? A million or something? That's a rough sentence, but when you go to trial and lose, they punish you. I didn't see any reference to what, uh, if he was offered a plea bargain, but clearly he didn't take it. But even if they offered him 15 or 20, he should have jumped on it. As for Cuban Harry's hope that he would quote, learn from this, well, his Instagram account is still up. And it has all the same photos used against him in it actually now includes pictures of him smiling from behind the visiting room plexiglass in the prison visitation booth. I guess all he wanted was the clout, and for Cuban Harry, that will always live as long as his Instagram is live. Our prophet, Muhammad Ali, American Dope.